Hey, good afternoon. Uh, we have to continue our tutorial. Not tutorial, like the questions we are solving C. That's ideal computer science, KNUST. And if we check uh, the time, it's 1 54. Today is Friday, December 7. The whole idea is. Uh, there is a book we are using in class and there are some questions in it the master said possibly some could come in this is missing some could come in exams and i said okay then why not give it a try and solve all the questions those i can't i'll skip them of course uh, and those maybe we have to google to see the best way of solving it we will, or like the best way to get the answer you we will do it together and that's it the, the whole idea is not necessarily like my semester exams i hope the answers will be somehow guiding for let's say next year those who will come next two years those who will come it will be like something they can always fall on to see how to solve this kind of question so um I've already it's about thirty four or so questions that I've only been able to solve like I've just done one tutorial which covers one to seven and if you go to YouTube I've created a channel for it. Um research uh, web extremist that's my account I've been using. Not this one. Is another set of videos relating to digital entrepreneurship. Is this one? Um, and this, and this is the last one I did. No, not this. These are also semester questions we did relating to database, and I solved those questions. But for C, I think that's it. This is the first one question one to six you know i think this is uh, wrong it's one to seven the heading is wrong it's one to seven we have to change question one to seven i think let me add two so it was actually dash but it looks like uh used to took away the dash so uh, so and this is the time and other things so that is it so we are continuing today on question seven from question seven and let's go straight to action and see what we can do before we close uh, the right uh, solution that accepts as input an integer and then output the sum of the digits in the number as well as the number of digits it has with the appropriate captions so there are two things we have to do here first or like two things we want we will pick in a number if um this a notepad or let's use the editor straight away create a new one um we are going to take input and then uh, as integer and then sum of input and then count of input so what that means is for example if you have this number the count is one two three four five six if we have this the count is one two three now the sum if we have this the sum is five plus four this this is it so let's go back to here so if you have this digit uh, sum is eight plus four plus five and that should be twelve plus I think seventeen let's rely on <laughs> at least uh, eight uh, plus four plus five and that is seventeen that's how bad calculator has made as simple things like this we, we 
can use calculator again. So that is the sum, and the count is three as one, two, three. So uh, count is called the three. Now, if you take another number, let's say this sum is uh, let's see our calculator eight plus four plus five plus four plus four plus five. That's 30, so sum is 30, and then uh, I'll count how many digits are in it. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. That is six. So, this is something we want to achieve. Like, you ask the user, enter a number, then you do the sum display, and then you count it also, and then display. So, uh, to achieve the if it was like uh, an R, like uh, integer array you can just put the numbers in it then you loop with index so index 0 will be 8 index 4 will be this index will be this so but it's not the input says um, to accept in integer value so uh, what we are going to do um, Actually, we are going to use two tricks. One, we have to always, we should be able to pick the numbers one by one. And there are two ways of doing it. Let's look for example uh, from small number first. Let's say we have this. How do we get the last number or like the first number? If it's not in an array to loop like index one, index two, index three, it's difficult getting the first number. But we can use a trick in modulo, modulo mathematics to get the last number. For example, this number um, modulo ten will give you nine, so that gives us the, the the last number. So. What, what it means is if like after getting this number we can get a way to take away this and take a modulo of the remaining that will still give us eight then how do we find a way to get away with this take a modulo of this that will give us eight so when we sum those modules uh, modulos then we can get the sum of the numbers so we need to use modulo 10 on this number and then find a way to get rid of the last number and to get rid of the last number let's see something in c plus flower like in program we know like uh, if let's say if you have this and you divide by 10 the answer is simple the answer will be this 8.84 So let's see something. Uh, yes, it should work that way. Let's let's just use a program to test the way we want to go about it. And uh, should it include uh, I will stream. These are to help us get some files the name space std this helps us get the c out and then the c in and the program begins with this then we save it as uh, let's say um, question whatever is it question three um, question three the c plus plus to be sure it's actually C plus by put it in code so that there will not be any extension added. So we have this. Let's test and see what we have is correct. It's not correct. What is this saying? The IO stream that means we've gotten something spelling wrong here. So I S T R so 
that is what it is int main so it has to be main okay the structure is correct now so let's test what i was talking about um let's see let's see we have a number which is equal to this and then resource um, in resource one which is equal to um, our number divided by 10 c out resource one This spelling mistake. Let's put it this and see. No. Just go to this. I have not even checked the error message and I'm solving. Let's see. Function int. No match for operator. So it has to be double. So it did three. It's actually supposed to be 83.4, but we are getting 83. That is, uh, it's wrong answer, but it's good news. Because we all, we want to find a way to do away with the last number. The last number. So, if we make here double, then uh, which double? 83.4 then you now get it and if you make it in tr uh, double uh, and then if you make it in tr you do it doesn't bring the there's mass so that's the trick we are going to use after taking the modulo of this with of modulo 10 of this which will give us the four then you divide that number by 10 and put it in an integer variable so that the decimal part automatically be thrown away then we'll be left with this then we we'll take a modulo of this after taking the modulo then we will uh, divide that number by 10 and put it in an integer variable and then that decimal will be thrown away so we kind of put that one in a loop and by the time we finish We'll be able to add those individual modules we've been picking to to get the answer we want so that is let's go to the answer what we're going to do is let's see uh, int number let's see this is the number we want to add them we want to do this so what we are going to do is um while the number is we don't know the, the length we don't know how many times we are going to do this if this is it we can let us look at say we are going for three times but if it's this we just don't know maybe you'd have to count one two three four we don't know so you just say while um This is how the number how the number is less than zero. No, greater than while the number is greater than zero. What will happen is if we take a modulo ten of this number, we will get four. Then we will divide by ten and put an integer, and that will throw away the four. We have the four. Let's say we are putting that four in sum. So we say uh, double sum is zero. So we, let's say we put it there. Now this one will take a modulo of the ten of this number. That will give us five. Then you add the five to the sum. After adding, then we divide it by ten, and that will throw away this one because it will be point five. And if you put it in an integer, that will throw that part away. Now then take a modulo of this remainder again uh, this number and then that will give us four we put a four in the sum and then you take a we divide it by ten and that will make it this way but when we put it in here then it will throw away this part so that is how we'll be going around it so 
this is a double sum so whereas we've not gotten to zero yet so while this number is still bigger than zero we can say our sum should be equal to we always be putting it in the sum so to be the value we've already have the plus um our number module 10 our number module 10 so uh, yeah so after getting this we'll have to divide now one it means we are now taking the module of this number which will give us five then five will be here now we have to divide this number by 10 so that it will be dot five and because it's integer this part will be thrown away so then we will say value uh, is equal to value divided by 10 like after dividing we, we, we are putting it back into the number this number <coughs> we are putting it back into the number to uh, this uh, error <laughs> let's see the message uh, the sum cannot be used as a function who's using sum as a function semicolon expected so that's here okay so when we are out of the loop and we are still in the main we are the loop ends here and the main ends here so whilst we when we come out of the loop we can print some nineteen so let's use four plus six plus four plus five. That is nineteen. So that is it. That's that's the whole concept. You take the number, you divide it, uh, you take a modulo that gives you the last digit. So you pick that last digit, put it in a variable, then that number you divide by ten so that, that decimal part will be thrown away that that is that is the whole idea so you've gotten the sum and to get the count one two three four to be able to know whether it's four or it's five okay it's like or it's four or it's five or it's six digits whilst we are doing the division we can be taking account of we've done one division we've done two the same if we are here we take modulo that is one and we take another modulo that is two we take another modulo three another modulo four another modulo five then we have to take five modules bef modules before we can finish with this number indirectly it means the number is five digits so we can just be um you say int count we initialize it to zero so after every activity you increase your count so when you see how to count, that should give you the number of the key. That's five. Let's output it correctly and see. So that's five. That is one, one, two, three, four, five. So we are right. And if we increase it, and then let's see. That is 39, and that's eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's right. Let's see if our calculator is right. Four plus six plus four plus five plus four plus five plus five plus six. Is that thirty nine we got? Yeah, thirty nine. So that means it's right. Let's add more. Uh, idiot. 
something 39 if add more and you're going back yeah, okay uh, there is a limit in teacher can be so uh, let's see integer limit c plus plus that is this figure so we can put more than that this is the maximum we can have that's 46 46 that's 2.1 billion something something integer cannot be more than that if we increase it by just one zero and what is like what cap if you exceed you you get rubbish you get rubbish it's like you'll be accessing other memories without information like C++ will not tell you there's kind of like that overflow is you just try to bring you useless memory so it, the mem it's not managed you will have to manage your thing and know this is where my I have to my limit this is where I shouldn't go and fetch information from so that is it for this question and if you run that is fine what we can do is uh, that is the question here yeah. mm -hmm. with the appropriate caption so let's write something sensible here um, let's see the sum of the digit let's go to this then you see count of the digits is equal to this and then when you run it you have to read hello yes hey now hey ah, okay Now, go on, 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 so, uh, sorry for that call. And my phone fell. I'm using my phone's internet. Uh, so, that is the appropriate caption. Let me see what I did. Okay, so the sum of the digits is 29, then the count of the digits is, is 7, so that's it. that's it. What we can do is, uh, we can let the user enter those information, so we just say, um, uh, somewhere here, uh, let's see how to um, enter any integer uh, value. And you will now accept it here, so this will not be this will be empty anyway. If you even leave it there, what do you enter will override it? So, but it doesn't make uh, it's not reasonable to leave it there. So, let's say we enter 89, the sum is 11, that is 8 plus 3, and then. Uh, Sum is yeah that's eleven the numbers are two that that's all so that is it for uh, this question and that's question eight so that's question eight that's question eight and then um that's sum of 
that big is uh, count whichever English just to make sure this understand that okay, that's so so we are done with uh, that particular question eight we can comment it now let's go to question nine a prime number may be defined as any any number that has only two factors they think it's one and the number itself one and the number itself now write a computer solution that can allow uh, a number to enter as input and output a message indicating whether or not the given number is a prime number do not assume any predefined function we want to like user will enter a number then you compare and is it number prime or is not prime i think that is just what we have to do and uh, we should not pre like uh, pre assume any predefined uh, function like uh, we shouldn't use any existing formula it's like we have to do everything from scratch if there is maybe some library that has a, a function to check whether a number is prime number or not no, we are not we are not supposed to use it we are supposed to do it from scratch do our own checks our ifs and our other things ourselves so that's it so let's move straight and what if the whole thing is first of all if the question you are asked it like you don't know what it is then that means you can use computer to solve it if let's say you don't know what a prime number is then you have to go and research on that what the prime number is before you can solve this question that is it if you don't know what a prime number is there's no way you can solve this one so we have been told it may be any number that has only two factors the digit one and the number itself and you know that is for example if you have let's say this you ask yourself apart from one and 89 can any other number divide this and the remainder will be zero if there is such a number then uh, this 89 is not a prime number so that is the whole idea we are using here so um let's see let's get our number so let's say value that could be this when all is set then you allow the user to input it but you have to make sure it's working all right before you start telling people to enter something so um let's let's see something we come here let me use this one so if um what was I even to write um, okay yeah prime number let's see a couple of the prime numbers the prime numbers up to 100 so these are the prime numbers you know one is not a prime number zero is not a prime number two three three okay maybe going forward we can just predict but for one and two zero and one you know they are not prime numbers so first of all if whatever the person entered if our value is zero or our value is one uh, then it's not a prime number. See out. That is not a prime number. Yes. We are not done yet. We <laughs> just uh, no clue. Uh, no idea. Like I have no idea. So let's see. What is this saying? I think uh, we have to make this one one. We're floating, let's see the message. Expected curly bracket. Okay, I think the, the curly bracket of the main 
have the main function this one this curly bracket that is the one i've tripped down there so that one was commented um no clue so if it's um if it's zero probably not a prime number if it's one value not a prime number that one, those one like zero and one we are setting now when we get to two we don't know a minute uh, mommy entrance uh, it will it will it will Sorry, sorry, sorry. Some there are doing some few work. Eh? have to be monitoring a small small so that's the whole thing for one and zero we've solved it <laughs> we know they are not now else now let's come here um if um you see whatever number if there is something else that can divide that number exactly and get a remainder of zero uh, that is that is not one and that is not 54 if there is something else that can divide 54 then that and get a remainder of zero then 54 is not prime so let's see um let's see if um the value divided by so we are coming to actually divided by two. Is it zero divided? Uh, no, that would be modulo. So you take that means can two go into fifty nine and get a remainder of zero? Uh, let's say modulo two. And then if no, then we go three. Can three go into fifty nine and give a remainder zero? Can four go into fifty four exactly? Can five go into fifty four exactly? Can six go into fifty four exactly? You will have to actually check, 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 check up to fifty four. No, fifty four. They are the maximum. So, like, the, you take fifty four, I will take one out. But anything in between, you will have to check all of them. Can two go into fifty four? Can three go into fifty four? Can four go into fifty four? Can five go into fifty four? Just, just that check and you know such as uh, such uh, for that check <laughs> you can't uh, use these if things first it has been either four or while because like the one will be increasing like one will change to two you test three you change text four you test five you test six you test seven so it has to be in a loop so let me see Let's see if we can do it with four. So for uh, then you see in I, which is equal to we've already taken care of one and two, so we have we we'll have to start from two, and then I is less than value. Definitely fifty four will be able to go into fifty four. We know it, so we are not interested in that one. So that's why it's less than. If say it's equal to to try the fifty four again, so. This is it, and they will be increasing to we're going to three, we're going to four, we're going to five. So the increment is one. So for this, then now, um, now if um, if the number, if our value modulo. No, first we were using two modulo three, modulo four, modulo five in that increment, but now that will represent the i. So if modulo i 
is equivalent to zero. If this is zero, yes, then um, then the number is is not yes. If if it's able to divide it and there's no remainder, then the number is not a modulo. So let's see and um, see out. Let me see. Not a modulo. Not a, not a prime. Let's see out. Not a prime. So. I'm not expecting the correct answer, but I'm looking at it. It's supposed to print only once this one, not print like that. Not a one, two, three, four. I think it's fine. Not a prime, not a prime, not a prime, not a prime. Why is it printing it plenty like that? Okay, it's rather printing this. It's rather printing this. So what we are going to do is uh, let's get some kind of uh, if, uh, let's say something to check instead of printing it there we need something to check so we can say true or false so let's say uh, let's say it's, it's prime let's see we are zooming we are first of all assuming the number is prime so uh, if it's one or two then that means uh, it's not prime now if it can divide it exactly and there's no remainder it's also not a prime other than that print a number for us so let's see here the value So 54 is not a prime. Let's start with those we know. As the SC plus plus lecture said, if the value is then set out. But why not start with those you already know the answer? Value is equal to zero, or the value is one. Let's make it one line so that we can. Oh, it has to have a bracket. Why is not 
in this vein. Okay, let's see one. See how it Where have you gone wrong there? This, I mean, this is the part that is not working. So when uh, okay, let me see here. This one ends here, so this is it. And this else pass. If it is. <laughs> So, I think this is fine. Now, what I just left is to check the value of this. So, um, and you can use if, you can use uh, key, select key. You can use if statement, you can use select key. So, let's say if uh, is prime, if it's true. So, um, print this. Else. Uh, it's switch so if it's not this it's automatically this so there's no need to check again you can say c out yeah but uh, uh, not a prime number so then you can say this one it's a prime number or whichever english you want to use so is a prime number 11 is a prime number 10 not a prime number so you can see um follow so that like, like if you enter 10 it will tell you 10 is not a prime number or if it's 11 say it's 11 is a prime number so then we have a 10 not a prime number. Then it's not a prime number. So it's a prime number. So Ten is not a prime number. And then when you enter nine, the same nine is not a prime number. When you enter eleven, then it will tell you eleven is a prime number. So that is that is it for um, the question is this that's 9a so um, okay let's make um, this one let the user enter it so it's simple you just see uh, see out and then um, enter value to check if it's 
prime number so you have something like this and then it says C in and then you use this one here and then uh, that means you don't need this one you don't need to initialize that one again if you leave it there what you enter will override it but it's, it doesn't make sense to leave it so it's not rational to leave it as the AI master will say so 45, 45 is not a prime number and then uh, 74 is not a prime number those we know 11 is a prime number so that is it for a uh, 9a so you can comment that one and then that is a uh, question 9a then that one is to check if number is if, if number is prime number so if in the power is prime number so that now let's go to B Given a positive integer n, devise a computer solution that can be used to find another integer m whose factorial is n. Uh, for example, if n is given as 750, then m should be 6. 6 factorial. 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6. Is factorial, so factorial okay, so we are kind of reversing, like <laughs> reverse engineering the factorial. If let's say two factorial give us 720, then what number did we factorialize to, to get the 720? Let's say that is the whole thing we are trying to do. So let's see, first of all, let's say, um. 7 factorial is equal to, I think it's 7 times 1. Sir! Hey. Sorry. So who is that? Okay. 
Okay, so semifactorial is um, that is, is it one times two times three times four times five times six. Is it times plus? Let me see. So one times. Two times three times four times five times six. Okay, the seven is out. So the seven is out, and that will give you seven factorial. So you are multiplying all the numbers below it, below the seven itself, and then that will give you the factorial, which is uh, seven twenty. So now. Uh, if you want to get the 7 back, what do you do? Um, okay, so we can, for example, it was multiply, 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 and then we got it. So we can divide, 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 and then we will get it. Yeah, so... Let's see, 720 divided by 6. So, let's get the normal one. So, we have 720 divided by 6. You, know, okay, you get 120, then divided by 5, you get 24. Divided by 4, you will get 6. Divided by uh, Claire, where is Claire? So this is seven twenty divided by divided by six. That is first one, so divided by five. Second divided by four. Third divided by three. Divided by two. Then divided by one. So how many divisions have we done? One, two, three, four, five. Divided by one. Uh, by one. So uh, oh, not calculator. I need um, Excel. So we have seven twenty. Okay, why not we do it and see if it works? So let's see. Um, we have the number. Let's see in value. This is the number we want to look at. We know seven twenty. So um, we are going to keep dividing it, and then we counting the number of times we divide. So. And then um, why we've not reached zero? So what value is greater than zero or one? Okay, just try if you, if you don't want really to modify it. Let's see, it counts. Let's see, zero. Let's see, we're starting from one. So um, while this is it value is equal to value divided by divided by count 
Does that, that make sense? Um, count plus plus. So, now uh -huh, we are done. Anything in CR should be the value we multiply to get error. Can be. No, let me see. Let's see. Eight factorial. So eight, uh, eight factorial. So we have the uh, eight factor. Huh. Uh, is that right? Eight factorial A. That looks odd. Seven factorial. Six factorial. Mm. And then uh, seven. So let's see if we have um, okay. So this is actually six. This is six factorial that give us okay. Then let's start from zero. This is a count. Start from one. Okay, I can put this to six and a half. Seven factorial. So fifty forty. Fifty forty should give us seven factorial. Yeah, so let's say ten factorial. this one and then here that's 10 so that's it it's like we are reversing uh, the numbers we multiply and then we got the factorial we are reversing it that is that is it so why does this one always give okay so let's see here this is zero and then we say this is zero that doesn't make sense ah. <laughs> that doesn't make sense while wow, this is mm, okay 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 this cannot be zero because if you make it zero this will literally be a number divided by zero it doesn't work so <laughs> can divide a number by zero so that cannot be zero so what will happen is you just have to make it this is one you can do that so and then this one minus one that is the one we added here you are supposed to start a count from zero but you, if you start from zero here will be like a number divided by zero which will not work so what we are going to do is you start from one then you remove that one so kind of plus one minus one and then that, that is it so that is it uh, there, there could be possible ways of getting it but we've gotten the answer uh, an answer we want and i don't know if let's see if maybe we say 50 factorial, if, wait, that was serious. So let me see if we have this. That is 13. Mm, I couldn't handle it. Um, let's say float. Figure it's too big for float. I wanted to test extreme cases, but that is it, it's working. There's an answer if you come out right this. Uh, there could be efficient ways of doing it, but I don't know if 
this handles all cases but for now it's working so I think we can make it a uh, can let the user enter it so we just see see out enter a value I don't know which English to use but <laughs> we want to get let the user enter a number then we see which number which not like which numbers factoria gave what the user entered so see you can decide which english to use yourself so that is that is it here so the person will enter let's see i've entered four four factoria is this hey okay three factoria yeah so that is three times that is one times two times three right now three factorial that is three factorial no i say three factorial is six why am i getting Okay, I, I I get it, I get it. So it's there are certain numbers. Uh, how should I explain it? It's not the exact answer. For example, let's see uh, if we take away this. Let's see, we've taken away this 11. So 11 factorial, uh, 11 factorial gives this. But let's see something meaningful. 720. No, this is 6 factorial gives 720. So if you say uh, 721. That is not seven factorial. That is not eight factorial. It's in between. So, it's it just tells you the number of times uh, the multiplication happened. So, it's uh, uh, factorial seven. Yes. So. Factorial is supposed to give us uh, mm -hmm. the one is not part, so I did when I was struggling to get the answer, that was why I put this equals that. So, this is the whole thing. If you say 23, it's still supposed to give you the six factorial, but there's actually a remainder, it's like this is a wrong, wrong uh, input. That is the whole thing. It's a wrong input because if um, we do this, uh, let's see this. to get this let's say if you enter 727 then you get the 720 and then uh, tell you uh, 
it is six factorial is seven twenty you'll be left with a uh, seven that is what I wanted to do but that is kind of true as object so let's just maintain this one hoping they will always the value here will always be a correct value so that's it if you put exact value that's it was factorialized and then <laughs> it got it you it, the answer will be correct so that is it and that is it here we can make the user input we can make the user input here so that's it for 10b and then since the user is inputting we don't need this one again that's why we are replacing here so we have uh, question 10 or is it 9 question 9b so uh, reverse of factorial number so that's it that's it for 10 that means we can comment this one and then we move to uh, question next then it is we can go away and then uh, you need this so what is next question 10 if p and q are both primes and q is equal to p plus 2 then the p and q are called twin primes for example, 5 and 7 are 10 primes. Divide the complete solution to list all primes that are less than a positive <laughs> integer. Hey, <laughs> that, uh, The peg P and Q are called twin primes. If these two numbers are primes, P and Q, if they are all primes, then uh, the pair. okay so the whole thing is uh, let's see the prime numbers here these are prime numbers what the difference between two and three the difference is one what the difference between three and five that is two the difference between five and seven that is two the difference between seven and eleven that is uh, four the difference between eleven and thirteen that is two the difference between uh, 13 and 17, 13, 4, that's 4. So, those with a difference of 2, they are twin primes. That is, those are the people we want to get. So, first of all, we want to output this one, then look through that one. Which ones, like this one, the next one, the difference is 2. Then, those are the sets we will print out as so first of all what that means is we have to get all the prime numbers um by the complete solution to this all prime number that are less than a positive integer n so let's see um let's see int n which is called to let's say 100 then what that means is we have to get all the prime twin primes less than 100 if you see if you make n thousand less than thousand so first of all how do we get the numbers uh, that are prime we've already done a check on if a number is prime where is it i think that is the 9a Hello. Okay. I'm, I'm coming. Hey, mate.
Hope I will not get up again. So, uh, where were we? Okay, these terrible twins, that's where we are. So, this can go down. First of all, we have to see, we have to get all the prime numbers, like less than less than 100. Oh, let's see if we are to use 50. Okay, we can use handle for a test. We can change it later. So, we already have a code here that check if a number is prime. So, mom, where does it start from? This one. I've copied it. Now, this is what checks if the number is prime. Now, but this time around, you don't need just one number. You want to keep checking, like that one too, in a loop. Checking, checking. So, we need another loop again. To check one, then move to two, check two, then then you be putting it in array. You check this one is prime, put it in array. Check this one is prime, put it. This one is not prime, we ignore it. Now, when we get in that array, then we start checking. Array index one and index two is a difference to if you then print one and two. Three and four, the difference is it two. That is what we want to do. Um, two. So let's take this opportunity to learn uh, something small. What I want to do is instead of the whole checking all this here, I want to put all this thing into a function so so that I can just call the function here and say let's see if uh, is prime i want to make is prime a function then i'll just put in two 29 so automatically to check this will be a function that's what i want to do so and to uh, to do it that way you do it outside the main so that's why i copied everything here i think that check starts from here the whole of this one outside the main so this is it here and then you see um in uh, is prime uh, let's say int number so open bracket we close bracket so we don't need all this here what we are going to do now is then boo. so if this number is zero so we can just put this one here instead of this so if it's zero or it's one then you see return zero or return force then uh, if this 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 then here you see return force so in that case we don't even need this
Yeah. yeah. So let's hope it works. So if it doesn't work, we'll go back and utilize it. So you see in there, then you see see out. It's bringing one or two. Either um, this one. If it's yes, it will bring zero. Hundred is not. So let's say eleven it should be give us one. Wow. Okay, so we have nine. Nine is not a prime number. One, one is not a prime number. Three, three is a prime number. Six is not a prime number. Okay, so <coughs> now this does a check for us. So what is left is just to put it in a loop so that we'll be getting all the primes uh, if like less than 100 so that is it so in that case we need an array so let's say in t like um, my array my array and the maximum of the array will now be the end yeah that would be the end so so we have um, four. Okay. The length of the array. Let's get the length of the. Array. Okay. So it's this way. In i, which is in i, which is equal to zero. No. So let's go to um, this one. Let's go to the length of the array. So, and then this is how we get the length. Uh, that length is equal to size of size of the array divided by at least one byte of it so I'm sorry, one so this is the length so this is length then we have i plus plus so have it this way we are, let's say if it's six we are going to start from one two okay we know one is not a prime so can start from two. 
because definitely our function is prime function will return 0 4 once so we can start from 2 and we are going to do it up to the I think we can even be using the n as the maximum volume if you have to check up to 100 so we check one is one a prime is two a prime is three a prime that way up to 100 that way up to 100 so we can do it so now if um, if it's prime if the value is prime then we can put this in an array so that means uh, my array uh, of that index should be i so we are putting it in the array we are putting it in the array so let's see something see out um, Output this um, and you are error. What is this saying? Bracket open expected. Brackets before is prime. Oh, oh, yeah, Uncle, it's true. So, this has to be a bracket here. So, just like if you are saying if this one is equal to one, so that has to be in bracket. And so, this is it. And seven. Okay, five is a prime. Okay. Um, what did we see? Two. Two, three, five. So five on that zero. Let's say ninety. So these are the prime numbers. Thirty-one, thirty-seven, thirty-three, thirty-four, forty-five, eighty-nine. Let's see, hundred, ninety-seven. I think these are correct numbers, except that these two is giving zero two. Why are you giving zero two?
this the way to add no i think we didn't even use this <laughs> i was to explain the, the rationale behind it the whole thing is if you want to get the size of the area or the length it's like uh, you have to get the whole bite like the whole array and then you know items are stored in bytes so you just divide it by one byte and then you get the uh, i think we are not, now we are not using this so Some memory allocations I'm not interested in.
okay i guess it. the zero was actually coming from another c out which was taking the status of 100 so it's like another it's another c out that is conflicting with what we are doing <laughs> so that is that is it is at the numbers so we've gotten the prime numbers now we want to check if um, the difference between this and this if uh, if it's two then you print it out there is no two uh, um, start from two two is a prime number so if the difference between this and this is two then we just print this the difference between this and this is two just print that is that is what we are going to do so yeah but for now we, we have everything in our array so we just have to do another loop to to see if the difference is something like that so um, i think we can use this so for i Well, it was printing, but just adding unnecessary things. So, I this less than is equal to this. Okay, maybe it was printing both. So this one actually is zero zero. So. Found 25 prime numbers. Okay, so then uh, you see this one from this, and then apply it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, hey, hey. That C plus plus like on managed memory. So if you do any nonsense, you just be printing any memory. You <laughs> you kind of uh, got into do not tell you index out of range. So you have to. We don't want to print everything. We just want to print where the difference is too. So 
let's see if this one plus two is the next one so if this one plus two it's equivalent to the next one the next one will give this one remember here is the index that has to increase but here we're just adding two to the value of whatever this one is returning so something like this and I guess bracket everything to be one so if this is it then output the first number and then output the second number too so this one this is just to indicate second number change it uh, oh hey okay so this is something we want okay so three and five are prime number like the differences between five three and five is two between five and seven is two between uh, eleven and thirteen seventy one and six good we've gotten it so if uh, we are to go here and there may be fifty okay still up to forty nine so let see, we have 30 here. Let's see the prime. Ah, that's it. So it's only pick less than 30. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. So we can format this one a, a little bit and maybe kind of something meaningful. So let's see, we have it here in bracket. And instead of this one, does it have semicolon? Then the second one will come. Next to the second one, have a bracket close. Yeah, that's it. So these are the pair of uh, prime numbers. The prime numbers, prime twins, yeah, or like twin prime. These are twin prime. So like this and this one, they are all prime number, and the difference is two. This and this, they are all prime number, and the difference is two. This and this, they have a prime, the difference is two. This and this. And they are all less than the figure you state here. So if you put 100 here, it will give you all the change. What are you talking about? What about 100? So yeah, that it will give you. And if you have to get all twin primes, thousand, less than thousand. Yes, yes, yes. And that is it. And you can see. This is prime number, this is prime number, the difference are there. So if you scroll up and that's it. So we are good to go. Let's see 500. And then uh, so that's 500 starting. So that's it. that's it. We can make this one user input. So just say we don't need this anymore. So you say see out. Enter a uh, number or whatever English you want to use, and then it says C in, and then the N. So this will not be hard coded again to be this way. And the user will enter. So if I enter 2000, yes, so these are the all the prime numbers, the twin primes less than 2000. So that's it. Yeah, we are good to go. So that's it. We are done with that question. And uh, actually, what it means is I will have done this check to see if it's a prime number here. Like instead of just having this function, I will have used all these ones here again. So it's kind of it makes it easier if you make that one a function and then you use it in in your code so that is that's it for this that is for question 10
ten. Yeah, so here okay so this is it from here going we are commenting i think it's up to here we are done with it so this is um question 10 but this one is part of question 10 so this function is part of question 10 so function is part of question 10 but if you are to run it remember you have to create it outside the main outside this main so but for it to fall under the solution of question 10 that's why I brought it inside here right so that's it for this question let's see the next question that question 10 that using the division by a computer solution that it can be used to m goes into n as well as the remainder the value so for m and n will be read as input so like two goes into 20 how many times two goes into 100 how many times five goes into 90 how many times three goes into 72 how many times they say it goes in 10 times remainder one Oh, it goes in 20 times remainder 2 that is that is uh, something uh, he, he we want to achieve so that is a question um, remember to create it above the to me into me and finish yeah I'm just emphasizing this function has to come here so and the next one is we are done every day so you go um, 10 goes into 20 how many times so let's see number so you say into 344 um, so int int number let's say 10 then goes into um, let's say 400 how many times when you want to get the remainder or oh, let's say 3 goes into 400 how many times so this is what we want to achieve. This is what we want to achieve. So um, I think we can use the same modulo to the modulo. It goes into okay. No, so let's see. We can use the minus like four hundred. That we shouldn't use division sign. We shouldn't use the division sign. So we can say maybe 400 divided by 3 and then checking the remainder. So okay, if you use the modulo sign. You will get the remainder, but you will not get the how many times three went into four hundred. Let's see, um, three, uh, three, ten, thirty. So let's say thirty-two. So if you do modulo, of th if you use modulo thirty-two, you know there's a remainder of two. But you don't know like uh, how many three goes into. So I think you can use the minus 32 is like 32 minus 3 
then the, that remainder let's say you get 29 so you have 29 minus 3 then you get um, 26 so you have 30, 20, 20, 20, 29 minus 3 so you get 26 so that 26 to minus 3 you get 23 that 23 minus 3 you get 20 so this is just what we are going to do just that we should be able to achieve this so you don't know how many times we are going to do it so you have to use the while loop so while what it goes into what 32 is still bigger than 3 let's keep subtracting so what 32 is bigger than 3 we we'll keep subtracting um, keep and then let's get a counter to count the number of times we are doing it so let's count why start is zero you don't know so then we will, we will subtract um, the number will be equal to the number minus three and then we increase our counter so this is, this is the number of times it goes into 15 hey let's try and see okay we are not outputting anything so see how um, you will have So this one, you subtract 3, you get 27, we put that 27, or is it 29, in that same number, and then we subtract 3, we put the remainder in that same number, so here has to be that same number, okay, nice, so, 20, then we say 3 times 9, that gives 27 so remainder 2 so if you have this one 82 it goes into 32 and you say 3 times 32 that's 96 so we will be left with the remainder of 2 so that is it this gives how many times it goes into so um you can mix something sounds good and you see our number no this number so we have three goes into this it goes into this Let's see, 3 goes into 98. Then we have uh, let's see, this one counts.
3 goes into 2, 32 times hey. Is that rational? <laughs> it's not rational. And uh, the reason is, you know, we've messed with this a lot. So that's not the original 98 again. So let's do something like this and then goes uh, into original. We want to get the actual number back up somewhere and then. Then we can mess around with this inside the loop, and then this will store the original number we want to check. So instead of this one, we use this the original. So three goes into 98 32 times. Yes, yeah, three goes into this 32 times. Um, and how do we get the remainder? The remainder, um, see out, we can use the how do you call it? This one mod module this will give it it will give the, the number so remainder remainder so the key that's it so we've gotten it without using the division sign and alternatively here we, what we can do is we can multiply this can do is this supposed to be count not count plus plus <coughs> I suppose I thought count plus plus will increase whatever final value here by one but I check is saying something else. so we can multiply this by one number and then we subtract it from this this minus this this should also give yeah, the same thing that goes into 98 32 times what we actually did is to multiply this by this we get and then you subtract it we subtract it from 98 that will also give us the remainder so that is it for this particular question let's say if there is no uh, using the division used to go I mean to that's a 12 so um 354 so we can comment this one too and then we see this is um, question 11 um, so um what is next I Closing for then eight, nine, ten, eleven, which can be five questions. Um, let's see this one. Um, Galloway. Let's see question twelve. 
Locally, this is a small town in Central Vietnam of Ghana. It was estimated by the population mm -hmm. by this time. The population has increased at the rate of 15% every six months. Yeah, I find it very wonderful to determine the number of years that it will take for the population to size to a C2 million for the ability to become a city. Mm. The same way as I keep saying, this is also uh, has to do with some population increase. So if practically you can't take a pen and paper to work this question, then there's no way out you can you can answer this question. Um, so because if you are giving this figure, you should be able to take a calculator and then work it out. But if if you can then you have to maybe let like someone give you the formula for calculating it. So let's see if we can quickly do it, but if it takes time, we will run away from it and attend to it. Someday. So this is 11, let's go to 12. Let's go to question 12 and then... <coughs> the population of this time is... So we have... Um, Current population is uh, two hundred. I require to the computer solution to determine the number of to be see two million. So um, How long it will take to exceed two million? So let's say two. The figure we want to exceed is one, two, three, one, two, three. And then we will have to it's fifteen percent every six months. So every six months, <coughs> this figure will be increasing by fifteen percent. So every uh, if the original is. And that means every six might to be increasing by uh, that's multiplying it by this percentage. So let's say growth is equal to fifteen percent. So now let's see. Um, so while like this one to the same thing is it every six might to be increasing every six months. So we don't know how long it will take. So we have to use uh, either a loop or this condition. Yeah, a loop definitely. Um, so while um, our current population. Um, while the population still less than always got to the figure we want to exceed they will think we will keep increasing the the, the growth so this will still be percentage that 15 and that would be like 1.15 times Expected. Ticket, 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 
send for the Five years to reach this population. I'm saying times two because this is actually a uh, six months. So every year, this is twelve. I think twelve. Yes. Hey. Hmm. Well, we should be able to calculate this manually to see how long it will take. Here is the case, but 60, 62 years, um, 67 years, that is, our current population is still less than the target. Still is on the target. Okay, so is Okay, so let's see. Um, operation from
position after a time. This is the starting position. We go for it in the time in hours or years. formula so times e which is what is this number two point seven one eight two eight two point seven one eight two eight so This how do you work to the power? There's something like this, this, this to the power. So that's right. To the power. Then the time is we don't know time. It's already this one we want. We know this is the 2 million. And the total population after whatever years, 2 million. No. No. And that is uh, what initially I said. If, I, if you don't know how to work it manually, what the question you will not be able to solve it with. Uh, with computer if you take what we have for example this is given eight years if you take away this it gives that's 13 years and if you take away this it gives um, 67 years and the reason why i added this is for example if I was looking at it this way let's see the 15% growth are you calculating it every year are you calculating it on the 200 initial or like you are calculating on the increment like uh, how compound interest is calculated although every year your principal will change and then you do a new calculation that is what I'm looking at so I think for this one we will skip it because I don't know population and then by that time what figure are we to get to get four hundred that's wrong. Get two point two. Okay, so let's say two hundred for the first six months, it will be this increment. This is in percentage, like so you can express it in this way so this is with new one and the next one is this hmm. 
I'll, I'll skip this and I hope um, you will have to find uh, we I have to let someone teach me how to calculate this person this population so in that case uh, I'll be able to possibly revisit this uh, but if you know how to calculate it manually maybe if you are into this population thing and you can calculate it manually then this be is something like this it's just something like this uh, what we have to look at is the formula we have to use here so that is that is it for now if it's something different in the years beyond the years so this is it and it's telling us it's 68 years this 68 is for this is like uh, every six months so if you multiply this by two Kind of some 12 years, this makes sense. So, like every six months, there is this increment. Uh, okay, let's let's just leave it here. Let's just leave it here. So, it it buttresses the point I was saying if you can take pen and paper and work it then that means there's no way you can use computer to work it so i'll skip that one and see uh, if uh, i can get a correct understanding of it so uh, I, I i didn't even want to tackle this thing so let's see well, what is next um no okay okay so i'll just I'll end here and then uh, this new guess and other things. This is absolute what, what, what. Which number? Yeah, next uh, next tutorials. Inshallah, I'll try and see if tomorrow I can I can then I'll continue from and that is question eleven. If today and tomorrow someone is able to explain how population is calculated, then in my next video I might give a try. That's if this one is wrong. And I'll give a comment under the YouTube video that this one has to be recalculated again. So because we are getting answer which is twelve, but we don't know whether that answer is correct because I can't work it manually to know the answer. So that is it for uh, that is two. <coughs> I'll upload it on YouTube and I'll put the code here uh, slash KNUST. So I'll put the code here and this is the first one I did. And no, this has to do with. Um, the database but i'll find a way so that yeah, as part of the downloads this particular one too will be there for for you to download so that is it for today uh, see you next time on this note i say what's the